right, so with our biochar inoculant, we want to go ahead and have a 50-50 mix. So we got about five gallons of biochar here. We're going to take about two and a half gallons of worm castings. We're going to go ahead and give that a quick mix. And our goal with the inoculation is to go ahead and impregnate it with bacterial and microbial stuff. So, um, you know, uh, and then nutrients, trace elements, all that kind of good stuff. So worm castings, high in all of that. We're gonna put two and a half gallons of compost from our garden. And this is, just came from one of our hot piles. So we'll go ahead and mix that in. All right, so go ahead and throw some flour on top and we're gonna use this as a natural food for the microbes and the bacteria and go ahead and mix that in. Now this is where the fun begins. We're gonna go ahead and start supercharging it. We got some bat guano, which is the number one organic fertilizer in the world. Worm castings is number two, so we're gonna have both of those in here. Bat guano, I don't know if you know, super expensive, but it goes a long way. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add about an eighth of a cup to this five gallon batch. Remember, this is all about nutrients, microbes, bacteria, and fungal activity. Now we're gonna add about two cups of liquid seaweed and some molasses, the food for the microbes. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill it to the top and mix it uh, with non-chlorinated water. We're gonna use rainwater, but if you don't have anything but city water, you can go ahead and fill up a bucket, let it sit 24 hours, the chlorine will go ahead and go out. It's actually rainwater from our 20,000 gallon rain tank here on property. And you really want to make sure that you soak it in water. And the reason that is is because charcoal actually repels water. You want to make sure that you get a good soaking in here so that the charcoal has the ability to soak in all these microbes and nutrients. One little ounce of charcoal has the surface area of a football field. So it's like a little hotel for all of the microbes and bacteria to get in here. You're going to want to let this sit uh, for a couple days to a week and what will happen is you'll start to get a little bit of evaporation uh, but this will go ahead and start filling up with microbes, bacteria and fungal activity so that when you put it in the soil it will give it a an explosion as opposed to actually ripping the bacteria and the fungal activity from the soil uh, because what happens is the bacteria and the microbes actually want to colonize this and if you just put it on the soil they'll actually start leaching out of the soil. So make sure that you activate it before you use it and get your organic gardening party started. Now if you uh, want to know how to go ahead and make a biochar reactor and how to actually get all this wonderful biochar, go ahead and click the link below. Uh, I think we'll have a card that will pop out uh, so that you go and check that out. Cheap, easy, uh, that anybody can do. Other ways to inoculate it that take a little bit longer. You can go ahead and dig it into your active compost pile. And that's gonna take, of course, your compost anywhere from two months to six months. You can also throw it in your chicken pen. And as they urinate and defecate on the hay, it will also inoculate it with microbes. It'll also keep the smell down, but this is another long haul. This is gonna take a while for it to inoculate. But a good passive way to do it. Spread it out, watch the magic. Your chickens might not be too happy about it though. Thanks for joining us today. Subscribe for more videos on organic gardening and green build projects. Check out our organic gardening playlist, our Never Leak Rain Barrel, or our Chicken Coop Mansion for $50 or less.